What exactly is a for loop? A for loop is a useful tool for looking through lists or just doing something a specific number of times. So we can write one here in our start method on this. So we'll say for open parentheses int i is equal to zero because that is the integer we're going to be using. If i is less than, let's say five, then i plus plus. So we'll increment i. And then here we can just put debug.log and we can see this run. So I ran the loop. And now inside of Unity, once it reloads, we can just add this to our main camera and it should log. So let's drag that in there, press play. And if we look at our console, you'll see I ran the loop and we see that it happened five times. Uh, I have this collapse thing on. So it just gives me a nice clean count there. So uh, why is this useful? Well, we can use this I value that's being incremented in here. So I can say I ran the loop. Uh, so I, if I ran the loop, and say number of times, Now if we run it again, we'll see I ran the loop zero number of times, one number of times, two number of times, and so on and so forth. Uh, we can change this to one, so it doesn't say I ran the loop zero, it can say that I ran the loop one, but generally you start out with zero because if you were working with arrays or lists and trying to get their indexes, their indexes start at zero. And you can expand on this logic now that you have this in here. You can put if statements and things in here. So if i is equal to 2, for example, else we want to run this loop or run this debug, we can put another debug here and say something happens at 2. We go back into Unity and run that again. See, so we ran. And it says I ran loop one number of times, and at two, it just says something happens at two and then moves on to the next things. So you can add additional logic in there based on specific parameters. So say you're running through a list of enemies and you want to change their behaviors. So you loop through all the enemies and you say, hey, uh, what is their health at? And if their health is less than 10, well, we need to tell that enemy to run away because that enemy is scared because they're about to die. That would be just kind of a loose example of how you could use something like this. Another good example would be if you're looking for a specific type of object. So say you're trying to pick up, have an AI pick up an item and there's hundreds of items on the map and you want them to pick up the closest one. You could use a for loop to loop through those items and determine which one's the closest. And to actually just loop through an array for just a quick example, or we'll just do a list or we could do an array. So let's say game object, make an array game objects. is equal to game object and we'll say it's the length of six. So we just declare a new array with a length of six. So here, instead of saying I is less than five, we could say I is less than game objects dot length. And now it'll iterate through this and stop at six. So if we press play again, There we go. It says I ran five number of times starting at zero. And that, so you can see that is six items here. Now, if we actually wanted to do something with these items, uh, we don't currently have anything stored in these game objects. We could go ahead and just declare a public array up here and call these game objects. And we'll remove our array from here and we'll use this array. And we can. As we loop through, we can say debug.log. And we want to say game objects i. So we're getting our i, so our index that's incrementing through, and we're going to get the index inside of here. Dot, let's say name. So we'll just log out the name of the item that's in here. So if we go into our back into our code here. You can see that we have our game objects list here. So let's make this five and I can just drag 
light in here, make some random objects, and we'll just swap back and forth between all of them. And then we'll say name plus is at index plus i. So this is going to say the game object's name, the index it's at, and then the, yeah. It'll say the index that it's at, sorry. All right, oh, I didn't save it. Reload this, press play, and we'll see. Directional light is at index zero. And I'll pull this up so you can actually see it over here. Directional light is at index zero. Q is at index one. Directional light is at index two. Main camera is at index three, and cube is at index four. So that is how you would loop through a list of arrays. Uh, I hope this basic explanation of for loops helps. Uh, if there are any more questions, please throw them in the comments, and I'll do my best to answer them. But uh, please like and subscribe, and thanks for watching. Just want to take a quick moment to shamelessly promote myself. I have a game coming out on Steam on November 23rd called Survive the Uprising. It's a silly game. It's a wave-based survival where the machines have come to life and you can buy guns and upgrade equipment and things like that to fight off the waves until you can face up to the boss and defeat the level. Uh, if that's up your alley, please wishlist it or if, even if you just want to support the channel, I would really appreciate it.